right, greeting. Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres, which today I got up and it was a beautiful, I don't know, probably 55 degrees and it went on to be about 65 degrees. It was just outstanding today in uh, clear skies, very blue skies, bright sun, just a nice day and Sundays are great. The phone doesn't ring and uh, nobody stops by and it's just a day when you can kind of get some stuff done and when I came out this morning I thought um, nature is is ready to pop here and I better be with it I better be on my game so I have a few things that are pressing but one of them is this grow area and I, I know a lot of people are new and they don't know what the grow area is and uh, so I'll, I'll explain it kind of quick but I'll show it to you they would so it's it's a field and it's 300 feet long and then it's divided up in thirds so 100 by 100 100 by 100 100 by 100 and this hundred here behind me I moved my pigs over there this morning and that was really easy to do all I had to do was dump their feet in there and then they followed it and then I closed the gate and there's 10 of them in here and uh, that's all there's going to be in here this year now, we're a homestead we're not commercial farming so we don't have to feed out 40 pigs like I did on this field last year on this in this grow area I actually grew out 40 pigs 30 of them went were sold and I have 10 left <clears throat> and there's two of them that somebody needs and I have a few over there that I'm going to move over, but there's not going to be a whole lot of pigs here this summer, which is going to free me up to do some other things that I wanted to do. But <clears throat> the grow area, you'll notice there is no vegetation out here at all. Absolutely none, because those guys have been on it all winter long. All winter long they've been out here. And if a, a blade of grass pops up, they get it. So what I did today, there was some pretty deep holes out here. It took me longer than it usually does, but I went over it with uh, the tractor and a, a cultivator on the back, a three-point cultivator, and I just smoothed it out, and then I went down as deep as I could with that cultivator, and I got a pretty nice result here. It took me longer than usual, so off and on, I was probably a couple hours on this today. It's not a whole lot of area, but I can kind of take my time on it. I want it to look good because campfire's up there and that's where I sit and I look out here and it's got to look good. It doesn't have to. Um, if you're going to do a grow area, something like this, this concept, it doesn't have to look like this. Okay. Now what happens now is where the pigs are over this side on this 100 by 100, they're safe, they're contained, I can feed them, I'm going to drop them a bale of hay tonight before I go to bed and uh, they've got a house in there to get out of the sun they've got water they've got everything they need just like they did when they were up here when they're up here they congregate down that end where we are and so there's a big um, big glut of, uh, of bedding and stuff down there that I couldn't get through with the cultivator I'm gonna have to hit it with the rototiller and break it up but the rest of this is really nice now this field for your information was part of what they called on this farm the sand hill and it was just that it was just sand and the guy told me one time you put a plow into that and you'll never grow a thing in that field again so he, evidently he was wrong because I did it it was all sand and if I had just resorted to conventional means I probably wouldn't be growing anything on this now this was a hay field so what I'm able to do now is, it's early in the growing season, very early. Um, usually people are planting like the end of May, but I'm gonna put in on the last 100 by 100, I'm gonna put field peas and daikon radishes, I think. That's gonna be my combination down there. Oh no, I might put it on this one because I want it so that when this field is up, I can just pull this gate and then they'll be in here on the middle one. And then when that one is worn down, they've eaten everything off that, they can go to number three. 
And as soon as I put them on number two, I'm going to be in number one, plowing it up and getting it planted. So all summer long, I'm planting and rotating these animals on here. And it's, it's really productive because for a lot of reasons, it's, it's productive. First of all, they're happy, all right? A happy pig is a healthy pig. Um, number two, the, the happiness of the ground is my concern as well. So they manure to the ground, they urinate on it, they dig in it. And so the fertility of this ground is increasing all the time, not decreasing. So I never use any fertilizer on here. I never have. About the only thing that I've ever put on here is some compost. And it's, you know, it's a big area, so you'd have to have a lot of compost. And all I did was drop it in piles, different places, and cultivator threw it. It dispersed it. So I'm, I'm up, nothing major. Um, the majority of my fertility is coming from their guts. Um, you know, that goes through, the feed goes through them, and then they deposit it out. <coughs> Whatever I feed them winds up fertilizing this ground. <coughs> Uh, number three is per square foot, if you grow, say, turnips in here, uh, your, your fodder is, is pretty high. We figure it at about five pounds per square foot. So you figure 100 by 100, you know, do the math on that. It would be, I, I should know this by now, but I don't. But please, someone at home, do the math. 100 by 100 times five. And that's the amount of forage that will grow in each one of these paddocks. And we can do this for, let's see, if we get this planted by the 15th, which I, plan, I should, um, we should have a month's worth of growth on it by June 15th. I would say the end of June will probably move the pigs over onto this, even if it's not huge. Uh, we need to stay somewhere in the ballpark to where the end won't go way over, you know, if that makes any sense. But I think the tribal this is fenced, uh, and then there's a low fence on it that's electrified. And at some point, I will probably show you how I do that. So if you ever wanted to do this, you could duplicate my fencing situation. And uh, for 10 pigs, or there'll be eight by then, um, when I put them on that much forage, I don't think they're going to keep up with it very well. So I'm basically going to be, you know, for a handful of seeds, um, I'm going to be feeding these pigs. Now, you know, if we're not doing this commercially and we're just homesteading, what does this, what does this represent to me? You may be asking, you know, 10 pigs out on a pastured scenario. What does that represent to me? Well, let me tell you. I, it's like a bank account of pork that's on the hoof. Uh, they don't require very much from me on a daily basis. I come out and I look at them, I feed them. It doesn't take me very long. Once they're in on forages, I won't even be feeding them. They're going to be eating off of this ground. And their, their, their fat off of this forage will be tremendous, just tremendous. Now, these guys are all in excess of 300 pounds right now. And that's a pretty good sized pig. I mean, we wouldn't want pigs like that for the, <clears throat> the commercial market, be kind of big, but for a family scenario, it's perfect because you have really nice big chops and big steaks and everything's big. And if you're feeding people, that's, that's really what you want. You don't want something that just looks like what is at the, the supermarket. You want something that's really gonna feed that family. And if you follow, the Baker's Green Acres YouTube, you'll see that Jill uses a lot of the, the rendered fat in the house. A lot of it. It's, it's tremendous stuff and it's good for a lot of things. So, okay. I guess that's where I'm at. It's the end of the day. Look at that sunset. It's just beautiful. I think it must be getting on towards nine. And I just came out to do a quick surveying of how things were 
everybody's where they're supposed to be. That's my mode of transportation at the end of the day. My trusty steed, my 1995 Kawasaki 250 gets me where I need to go. And so I will end this and I got to go shut some waters off and just check a couple fence lines and then I'm heading in the house for that bowl of ice cream. We'll see you next time.